Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of power factor correction circuit for a boost converter in PSIM PowerSIM. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you will be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into our topic for today. This is the PSIM model of a power factor correction circuit for a boost converter. At the first place, let us try to understand what are we trying to do in the circuit. And that once that is clear, you will be able to simulate it. So I'll go to PSIM and demonstrate the simulation as well. So we are using an AC supply. We are converting it to a DC using an uncontrolled rectifier you can go for control rectifier configuration as well it totally depends on your requirement so the DC voltage that is obtained at here at this point is given as an input to a boost converter this is the boost converter circuit so power factor correction in the sense the voltage and current are to be in phase with respect to each other ideally they are expected to be in phase with respect to each other in what type of networks there uh, there will be in phase with respect to each other in resistive networks when you have a resistive load or a circuit is purely behaving as a resistor then voltage and current will be in phase with respect to each other but practically when we are using an inductor here and when we are using a capacitor when we are using a resistor we expect it to be either lagging or leading depending upon the nature of the load or the circuit so we want to ensure that the voltage and current are in phase with respect to each other because of the fact that whenever they are in phase with respect to each other the amount of losses in the circuit will be as less as possible and the efficiency with respect to those type of circuits will be maximum as a result result we will always try to achieve unity power factor in practical applications but not everywhere we will be requiring unity power factor circuit so there might be applications where you require some amount of reactive power so I'm not going to go much detail into that but what are we trying to achieve we are achieving the fact that the voltage and current should be in phase with respect to each other the voltage at this point and current flowing through the boost converter circuit should be in phase with respect to each other how are we doing that we are building a circuit we are taking the supply voltage uh, maintaining uh, the values of the voltage that is obtained whatever is obtained we will be synchronizing it with respect to the current that is flowing at this portion of the circuit and we will be comparing that using a comparator and we will generate a pulses to the MOSFET so by this way whatever changes in the supply is taking place it will adjust the getting pulses to the MOSFET such that voltage and current will always be in phase with respect to each other I hope this concept is clear once this concept is clear let us go to PSIM let us start our simulation over there Alright, here we are in PSIM. So, at the first place, we will be requiring an AC voltage source. So, sinusoidal supply is used. Consequently, we will be requiring uh, a universal bridge. So, you can go to uh, power, go to switches, and we will be using a single phase diode bridge. And uh, let us complete this portion of the circuit first. And uh, once this is done, we will be requiring an inductor uh, at this point and I'll be connecting it uh, in this particular fashion and we'll be using a current sensor so this is basically a current sensor that will determine the current value that is flowing through the circuit and the output can be obtained from this point so once that is done uh, we will be uh, requiring a capacitor and a diode as well so at, before that let us use a MOSFET switch you can go for uh, IGBTs as well we are not using the thyristor because we need a commutation circuit to turn them off and that is why we are going for IGBTs and uh, you can go for uh, MOSFETs as well. So I'll be using a diode. Uh, so I'm basically rigging up the circuit diagram of a boost converter. So I've done a lot of videos with respect to the design part of a boost converter, closed loop operation and uh, videos with respect to uh, MATLAB as well. So you can refer to that. That will always be helpful for you with respect to designing these type of circuits. So I, I'll be connecting that in this particular fashion. Now a diode to be connected in the forward direction. Capacitive uh, filter is used and then we'll be using a resistive load. Later on we can change it for different loads and check as well. So once this is done, we have considered uh, the initial portion of the circuit. Let us change the values as well. So we're using a 200 volt supply, 50 hertz frequency and uh, we're using an inductance of uh, 0 0.001 Henry. And uh, the design aspect, as I told you, you can refer to uh, my previous videos that is there. So that will give you a clear indication of how to design these type of circuits. Uh, the value of capacitor is 0 0.002 um, farad. And uh, we will be requiring uh, an initial voltage of about 300 volt just to ensure that the capacitor is initially charged. So that will be helpful in order to inject some reactive power. And the reactive power that is already there in the circuit will be neutralized with respect to the circuit. And that is why we are doing that. So once that is done, let us choose the value of resistor to be equal to 144 ohms. So now uh, the initial portion of the boost converter circuit and uh, an un uncontrolled 
called a bridge uh, that will give you a DC voltage for the boost converter is constructed. Now what is the, the closed loop portion of the simulation part? We will be requiring a voltage sensor. So we will be measuring the voltage of the supply. Uh, so whatever voltage is measured. So I will be dividing this by uh, or multiplying this by 0 0.02 that is nothing but uh, 1 by 50 so I am dividing it by this value such that we want it in a smaller scale so if you see the current will be in the range of 0 to 10 amps just to synchronize this value between that range I am doing that so uh, now whatever for example you have 200 volt supply you are multiplying it uh, with 0 0.02 that is 1 by 50 you will be getting around 4 volts positive and 4 volt negative at this point so that it is easier for us to con conveniently construct the circuit so once this is done we will be requiring uh, an absolute value block so you can go to elements go to uh, control and computational blocks so you can uh, take the absolute value here the reason why i want absolute value is because the sinusoidal signal will contain both positive and negative but i only want positive value of the output voltage uh, or the supply voltage sorry so positive value of the voltage is required because you're comparing it with a positive value of current at the output end so as a result we will be only requiring the positive portion of the circuit so once uh, we have given it to the absolute value block we will be requiring a product block so which is basically called as the multiplier so i'll be using a dc voltage source uh, the value that you want to multiply the circuit with can be defined over here 1.5 volt is what i'm going to multiply it with so you can try it for different values so the reason why I am multiplying it because I want to ensure that it is in the same scale for example now the supply is 200 volt and you are multiplying it 0 0.02 you will be getting around uh, 4, 4 volt at this point and only positive value of 4 volt will be appearing here here both positive and negative will be appearing this positive 4 volt will be comp uh, add, like multiplied with 1.5 so if you are multiplying uh, 1.5 with 4 you will be getting a value of 6 volt so the current range that I have designed the circuit is basically if between 0 to 10 amps so that is why I want the voltage range also to be within that range so that the comparison will be much simpler and easier so once this is done now I will be using a summing block over here and uh, that will be connected uh, between these two points and uh, the negative value that is nothing but the value of current that is obtained at this point the current that you are measuring will be given here so if you are approximately getting 8 amps so that will be compared with 6 so basically both are magnitudes now they are quantities that are magnitude it is not now defined it is voltage or current it only magnitude values that are there that's all so once that is done let us use a PID controller PA controller over here in order to improve the steady state response or uh, the transient response you can design the circuit accordingly so you basically can uh, do this by using different methods uh, design the values using transfer function approach that is applying Laplace transform so once that is done I will be required Requiring a limiter block I'll be connecting it after the PA controller the reason is very simple uh, I'll be able to set the limits of the circuit so the upper limit is set to 10 amps uh, 10 10 is the upper limit that I've set so that not greater than 10 will be passing through the circuit so there will be a specific range if the value is greater than 10 then consequently only 10 will be passed through the circuit that is the reason why I want to give this particular block once that is done I will be requiring a comparator so whatever value that is obtained here uh, will be compared with a carrier signal which is basically a triangular wave it is just like a sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique where you compare a signal that is obtained with a uh, carrier signal and based on the difference in this uh, two signals it will produce the pulses so I'll be connecting it to ground double click on this and I'll be setting carrier frequency to be equal to 20 kilohertz and I don't want any DC offset so set that to zero and uh, let the amplitude that is V peak to peak be equal to 10 because the value that I've set here is maximum will be 10 so based on that it should compare the values between these two points so once this is done I will be requiring um, another block which is uh, over here so this is called as on off switch controller so here what output you will get is basically pulses so it will it might be of equal width or it might be of different widths usually it will be of different widths because we are taking closed loop systems so as a result in sinusoidal pulse width modulation the pulse width will be some value in the first time second time it will be of lesser value and again it goes on changing so each and every time when the pulse goes from zero it, it is basically a square wave isn't it so when we are having a square 
square wave and when you are giving it to on off controller whenever one volt is appearing in the square wave it will take one as the input and it will trigger the mosfet at that particular time and once this pulse square wave goes to zero it will ensure that it, it has gone to zero and it will inform the mosfet that it is in zero condition as a result the mosfet gate terminal will not be triggered at that point of time it will basically inform that mosfet should operate or not so that is why you call this as on off controller i hope this concept is clear now once this is done we will be requiring an ammeter to measure the current and we will be requiring a voltmeter in order to measure the voltage at this point and at this point so i'll be connecting this uh, between these two points and i'll be connecting an ammeter in series with the circuit so we have to move this a little bit and uh, let us remove this let us connect this in series with the circuit in this particular fashion so once that is done i'll be requiring uh, a voltage source to be voltage probe to be measured at the output terminals so you can ensure that this is vp2 so you can change it to output voltage if you want or output and this is with respect to the supply supply voltage you can see so once this is done let us close we will be requiring one of the most important blocks that is simulation control so you can change it to one second uh, the reason why we want this is to control the simulation time so that is why we will be primarily using this now let us click on run simulation the time step has automatically changed based on the circuit requirement so nothing to worry about that so it does take some time to simulate over here simulation time is so now we can um, compare both supply voltage and the output voltage of the boost converter first. So if you carefully see, uh, you can zoom in a specific region as well. This is the DC voltage that is obtained across the input of the boost converter and this is the output voltage. Both are DC and consequently the output voltage is increased. So boost operation is achieved. So that is confirmed now. So now again let us run the simulation and let us compare the supply voltage of the boost converter with the supply current that is there. So that will give us whether uh, the fact that they are in phase with respect to each other or not. So now let us zoom in a specific region of the waveform in this particular fashion. And and if you see the voltage and current are in phase with respect to each other is starting at the same point ending at the same point so i psim is basically having components in ideal condition so exactly you have to get the waveform so in matlab there will be some differences because of the fact that the components are not ideal there will be some amount of voltage drops across individual devices so that is why we will not be getting the exact phasor relationship over there so apart from that now let us change the supply voltage let us say it is equal to 250 volt let me try it with a different load uh, let me use uh, an rl load in, and uh, let us check if we are still getting the same output so i'll be connecting uh, uh, an inductor in series with a resistor and i will be taking the tapping from this point and i have to connect it to this point and the voltage is to be measured between these two points let me choose the value to be equal to 5 milli now click on run simulation and uh, let us check if the voltage and current are still in the phase with respect to each other so let us now zoom in the specific region of the waveform and if you carefully observe, we are still getting voltage and current are in phase with respect to each other. They are starting at the same point and they are ending at the same point and the magnitudes might change because of the nature of the circuit. But we are still getting their phasor relationship to be in phase with respect to each other. So this is how we will be justifying. See, the supply is also changed. The load is also changed. We are using a different load. But still we are getting voltage and current are in phase with respect to each other. And that is why gate pulses to the boost converter plays a very, very important role. So I hope you were able to simulate power factor correction circuit for a boost converter on your own. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do like it, share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Thanks.